welcome back to another video. This is going to be a full tutorial on how to color a gemstone. The other night I was just sitting here coloring. I decided I just wanted to color and practice on some gemstones and I found this really cool bug in this coloring book. <laughs> and normally I wouldn't color something like a bug but it had this really cool gemstone right in the center and I just wanted to see what I could do with it and I love the way that it turned out and I actually just pulled my phone out just in case it turned out really good and I had wished that I recorded it because that happens many times so that is up in a YouTube shorts and I'll put it up in the corner if you would like to see it but that one was just a really fast playthrough because of course YouTube shorts can only be 60 seconds or under so it's really fast and it's set to music but you could see it all come together really quickly which is really really cool and I do need to go back and finish this bug I've been working on it in short increments or whenever I've had time but I love the way that it's turning out I've got a lot of Posca in here and stickles I wanted to give it a lot of extra added depth with other mediums rather than just colored pencils and I did use polychromos I'm going to be using polychromos in this video because so many of you ask me to bring out my polychromos and I wanted you all to see how beautifully they work in this book as you can see by looking at this I've gotten some really nice blends here with the polychromos they go down on this paper like an absolute dream so that is what we're going to do today if you check the description box down below you will find links down there for my Facebook group my Etsy shop and my patreon if you would like to support me there I also now have channel membership if you would like more information on that you can just click the join button down below the video so I'm gonna finish working on this one and I will share it in my Facebook group as soon as it's done I think it is turning out really, really cool, and normally I would not mix yellows with purples, <laughs> which is quite odd for me, but I really love the way that it's turning out. This is Summer Nights, also by Hannah Carlson, and I was able to find a page with some gemstones, very similar to the one that was on the back of that bug. We're going to work on this one here. I don't know how difficult that's going to be since it's in the corner of the page. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the right angle and get my hand in the right place for the camera when I'm trying to do something in the very corner of coloring pages, but we're going to see what we can do. I've also thought about doing another video showing you how to color crystals. Maybe this one here in a following video. If you would like to see that, please let me know in the comments below. So these are all the colors that I used. I'm going to use the same colors. If you would like to see me do another gemstone in other colors, let me know in the comments below and I would be glad to do that. But for this video, we're gonna color one exactly like we did the other one since you all loved it so much. So these are polychromos. I have cadmium yellow. I have my white because we're going to need that to bring all of the colors together. Dark indigo, cream, light phalo blue, and Prussian blue. So those are the colors we're going to be using today. So the first thing I always like to do is set aside the area that I want to be the highlighted area or the reflective area. So I'm going to use my cream and I'm just going to put a little bit of color right here in this corner. And so that is just telling me not to color in that space. <laughs> if you've watched my video on how to color with oil-based pencils, I'll link that one in the upper right hand corner if you haven't seen it. But if you've watched that video, I did say that I usually always like to go dark to light when I'm using my polychromos. But in this case, when I'm coloring a gemstone, I have found that this works much better because I'm able to use the lightest color to preserve that area so that I don't go back into that space. And so now I'm going with my next color, which is a blue. And this is the lightest of my blues. It is the light phalo blue. Now these pencils work best to apply them in layers. So it's okay to go all the way to the outer part of the gemstone and then just into where I have that cream color. Cause we are gonna come back and blend that out just a little bit more. Now I have Prussian blue. This is my next blue in the order from lightest to darkest. And I'm just going to come in here and start adding some of this color on the outside of where I laid the previous blue. And I'm actually layering it over the other color and blending it right into that color as well. And I'm coming all the way around the edges. By doing this, I'm going to create the extra added depth that you want to see on the gemstone. So I'm just going all the way around the outer edge. And I do have one more darker color. And I'm going to show you very soon what that one is going 
going to be used for. These colors are just beautiful together though. I love blues with yellows and y'all know how much I love blues just in general if you've been watching me for quite some time. Blue is just such a cool relaxing color. Now I'm coming back with the cream and I'm going to try to blend this color right into that lighter blue. And in some cases, it's going to turn green, which is going to make this gemstone or the color of this gemstone absolutely beautiful. Because once these colors layer over one another and blend into each other, the green it creates is gorgeous. And it's actually gonna look like I used more colors than I did. And I am taking this cream and I'm going over all of the colors, even the darker blues, because these pencils are all about layering. Now I have my light phalo blue again and I'm gonna work on blending some of these colors out just a little bit more into that cream because I really want a nice smooth transition. And in the end, you'll see what I do with the white. I'm gonna use the white to bring all the colors together and it's gonna look really, really cool. And I'm adding a, just a little bit more blue here up at the top just because, like I said a little bit earlier, I want that to turn to a shade of green right in there. It adds just a little bit more color to the gemstone and it makes the reflectiveness of the gemstone look really, really cool. And I am using rather light pressure. You don't wanna pile all your colors on right away. Now I have my Prussian blue again and I'm just adding another layer again. I'm going over the outer edges because I want to be able to cre create that extra added depth all the way around the gemstone. And keep in mind, I haven't even gone for my darkest color yet but that will come towards the end. I think down here we need to blend a little bit more of this out. And notice I put my yellow just here on this side and I brought my darker colors and my medium tones out a little bit further towards the center. I looked at a whole lot of colored gemstones online the other night when I wanted to practice this and I noticed a lot of people put their color right down the center and I'm doing mine a little bit differently just because I think it looks better. A lot of people have also just used one color family and I like this much, much better. I like the contrast between the yellow and the blue and how it creates that tint of green in there. I think it looks really, really cool and you'll see that when it's done. The other thing I noticed that a lot of others do is they use black to put the little lines inside the gemstone. I don't use black because I think the black is very, very dark. I tried it and I didn't like it at all. And then when you come to the last step, which I'm gonna show you where we come over it and bring all the colors together with white, the black still just stands out very much and it just looks way too dark and it doesn't look as natural to me. So I'm doing it a little bit different probably than what you're gonna see other people do. I'm gonna do mine a little bit different and I grabbed the cold gray four and I have a nice sharp lead on my pencil. I just sharpened it with my jar link. You need to make sure that you definitely have a sharp lead to do this. You're gonna just make lines any way you want throughout the gemstone. I'm gonna be quiet while I do this because I don't wanna mess up, <laughs> but you're just gonna put some crooked lines here. It doesn't really matter which way you go or how you do it, it will end up looking very, very natural when you're done and it's all blended together. So I probably need to press a little bit harder up here to get a little bit more of that color down. Okay, so I drew all of my lines inside the gemstone. And remember, this is just the way that I do it. You can do it the way that I do it, or you can always use black or even a darker gray if you wanted to. I probably could have even used the Prussian blue. And if I was using all of the same color family, I probably would have done so. But since I have the yellow in there, I didn't want to go too dark. So now I really want my center to pop and I want it to have a little bit of an extra something. <laughs> I just really want to be able to see that yellow. So that is where this cadmium yellow comes in and that's why I saved it till the end because I wanted to make sure all of my cream was in here and it looked really pretty. And this is also going to create a beautiful shade of green, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of this in the upper corner. See how that is turning green right up there when it blends in with the blue? Is that not so gorgeous? So I'm not doing it to the whole thing. I just want to do a very little bit and now I'm going to come back with my cream and I'm going to go over that once again. And you can really 
really see that little tint of green now. It's so pretty. So I have my light phalo blue. And like I said, these are pencils that are meant for layering. So you want to layer those colors on there and make sure you get plenty of layers so that you're getting a really nice blend. And now that those lines are in there, making it look like more of a natural gemstone, it's really starting to come together. And I'm blending some of this blue into that darker yellow, the cadmium yellow, to create a little bit more green. And it's just really cool because it looks like I used more colors than I did. So before I blend all the colors out, I'm going to grab my indigo, actually it's called dark indigo, and I'm going to add some of this in here to really give it a whole lot more depth. And I'm staying really close to the edge and I'm layering this color right over that other color and look at the difference that makes. It goes right over there so beautifully. These pencils are wonderful in these books. And the only reason I discovered that is because somebody in my Facebook group <laughs> said that they loved their polychromos with their Hannah Carlson books and I decided to try it and I was so impressed but I'm gonna pull this color out just a little bit more into those lighter blues and I'm doing it on this one side mostly but I'm also going to use it to come in here and make the edges really stand apart from the other part of the gemstone. I'm gonna turn my book just a little. And I would say I'm using medium pressure to do this. So of course now every time with any of your colored pencils you use your darker color, you need to come back with your next color and you need to blend it out and just pull it closer into the other colors. So this way your transition is much smoother. And let me tell y'all, these pencils will layer for days. They are like literally nonstop. <laughs> I could get so much color down here and do so much with these. And then I'm gonna put one more layer down here and make sure I get a really nice blend with this light phalo blue. Oh, look how pretty that is. Now I think I just want to add a little bit more of that gorgeous yellow. I'm going all the way up to the top over the other blues. Now I have my white and we are going to bring all of this together. Look how it just blends all those colors. <music> want to you can always come back and go over the areas that the white had lightened up just to make sure that you still have that extra added depth there and there's one last step when you get to the end and you're gonna to wanna to grab your Posca, and then you're just gonna make some lines on the outer edges just to make it look like it is a little bit reflective I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to finish this because I really don't wanna leave it undone. So I'm gonna color the outer part and I'm gonna use my polychromos. I'm going to try to create gold, but I'm also gonna use some of the colors that I used here in the center, the two yellows, which were the cream, the cadmium yellow, but I am adding in two other colors to make it look more gold, the light yellow ochre and the brown ochre. Now, the video's already gone on pretty long, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up to music while I do this so that you could just watch it all come together. So I just wanted to stop right here because I feel like I'm not able to add enough depth and dimension. So I did grab another color. For those of you that are following along, I wanted to make sure you knew which colors I was using. So I did grab the Burnt Umber and I'm just gonna add it in certain places to create that extra added depth and see if I can get the look that I'm actually going for. Now my whole goal here is to create gold, but I want to create a bright, vibrant gold. And by me adding in these other colors, the cadmium yellow and the cream, the whole point in that is so that I can bring the colors from the inside of the gemstone to the outside and I'm just using those to create balance throughout the entire gemstone. And I am using the 
white of the paper to create a little bit of a reflection. So when somebody else is looking at my gemstone, they will see those reflections all around the entire thing. So this is the burnt umber. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding this in and we'll see how much depth and dimension we can create with this. that I wanted to make it look like there were a couple areas that were reflective and these little spots right here that had a little bit more of a highlight on them where the gemstone had a little bit more yellow in this space. So I just want to take my yellow Posca and go over these just so that they stand out just a little bit more. And I think I want a little tiny one right there, but I think that looks super cool. And then I do want to come back with my white Posca and I'm just going to add in some highlights. I'm just doing it in certain places where I feel like I might have covered just a little bit too much. So our gemstone is totally done and oh my goodness I love it. <laughs> I hope that this tutorial was helpful and y'all really enjoyed it. If you color a gemstone, whether it be this one or another one, I would love to see it. You could share it in my Facebook group if you're not already a member. I always have the link down there so that you can join us. But I always love to see all of your work when you follow one of my YouTube tutorials. But I love the way that this all came together. And I really wanted to use a brighter gold but I still wanted it to look a little bit tarnished at the same time and so that was my idea when I put these colors together and I wanted to make sure I used the cadmium yellow which was the brightest yellow here inside the gemstone to bring it out here to create that extra bit of balance. I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. Everything that you've seen me use will be linked in the description box below and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring! Bye.